Hi and welcome to Web Applications with Delphi and TMS Web Core. My name is Holger Flick. You can email me at holger at flixengineering.com. That's also the name of my company, Flix Engineering. I'm also a Embarcadero Delphi MVP since 2016, and I'm really old because I've been using Delphi since 1996. So that's Delphi 2, actually. Also, I'm posting on Twitter or X, as it's called now with its fancy name, as HFlixster. You can find me on LinkedIn. And this presentation is designed for Delphi developers that want to embark on a new journey developing web applications because web applications, everybody is talking about them for a reason because if you want to be present on multiple platforms, not only on Windows, you can either go developing native applications with FireMonkey, for example, but you can also develop web applications and here in the United States, toasters are even able to show web applications on their display right now. So the web application is really the thing you want to do if you want to be present with one single code base on the most amount of devices, so to speak. That's the number one reason why you want to develop a web application because you don't need different code bases for different platforms. Even for the user interface, you can use the same user interface on all the different devices because web applications come with mechanisms, so-called responsive web applications, that you can develop the same user interface for all the different devices, be it a desktop device, a tablet, or a mobile phone. But enough of this, how can you develop web applications? Well, the sweet thing is you can still use Object Pascal and you can still use components that you're used to. You'll see that in a bit with the example that I'm going to show you, that the components are very, very similar. Um, they share the name with the VCL controls. So this will really be, and this will be the focus of this talk, rapid application development for web applications. And TMS Web Core is the tool that we are going to use, and TMS Web Core is object oriented and has as its core the red component based development concept. Deployment is going to be an X copy deployment, just as you're used from Delphi. There's not going to be a huge amount of libraries you have to deploy. You can literally take your application, copy it to any web server, and it will work, meaning the web server, again, can be in the cloud, it can be your Linux web server, it can be a Windows web server, it can be a Docker container of a web server, everything is possible. And you will use components, especially in this talk today, we'll just use components to build the application and you can access web services and other cloud services. We will not go into that today because um, we just wanna cover the basics. And of course, you're also able to include existing JavaScript frameworks because just like with Delphi, you don't want to reinvent the wheel over and over and over again. So instead of doing that, you have the opportunity to include existing JavaScript frameworks, libraries. Again, I can't focus on that today because that's one of the advanced topics. It is important to point out though that with TMS Web Core, you can build three application types. There's more templates that give you even more choice, but these are the basic three application types. First, the classic web client application. Second, the installable mobile application or formerly called progressive web application that can even be used offline. And it's very tough to distinguish on mobile devices from native applications. So that is a good choice if mobile is one of your major focuses developing the application. So PWAs might be something to look forward to. And then we also have desktop applications that can be built with TMS Web Core with a tool called TMS Miletus. There is a talk at this conference about TMS Miletus as well. So please have a look there. That means 
in a nutshell, you develop with TMS Web Core. It can be used as a web application, but without changing a huge amount of code, you can also produce desktop applications for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux that can be run on the desktop and do not require a web server. With regards to web design, TMS Web Core has three alternatives. The form designer based approach, this is what we will focus on today with the second approach where you can add HTML, CSS to the properties in this form designer object inspector, I should say. So those two are the ones to get started with. However, the criticism that a lot of web frameworks before TMS Web Core got was that it was difficult to build real web applications that don't look like desktop applications that have just been ported to the web. So with TMS Web Core, you can definitely also build full-blown web applications and then hook up your UI control logic to these controls. We're not going to focus on that today, but that is definitely possible. Maybe we have time for an example in the end, then I'll show that how cool that is. Today we will look at a very specific example. We'll build first, this, I take the time to do that, the VCL application. I gave it the fancy name, Watch My Monies, and it's a very simple example about an investment. You invest, here the example shows $10,000, and five over the span of five years and the yearly interest rate is 10 percent i wish that were true right so in year one you're going to get interest of a thousand dollars if you invest ten thousand and by the end of the year you have eleven thousand dollars and now we have compound interest because now the eleven thousand dollars are being used for the next ten percent at the end of the next year and so on and so on so component wise, we have a couple of edits, a button and a string grid. And what I will show that with little to no work, you can port this into the web. And we will even use, you can see that right here, this is not a standard edit control. These are bootstrap controls. So we will use the bootstrap template to create this example with bootstrap UI so that it looks even more so like a web application. Of course, the string grid is still very much a control that looks very much desktop. But the purpose of this talk is that you see if you have a VCL application, how easy it is to bring this application to the web and then start from there making visual changes to the user interface if you so desire. However, what you will see today with just a few clicks, you can bring your VCL application over to the web and it's going to be a full blown web application that you can deploy to any web server. Let's get started with the easy stuff, a VCL application. So we pick File New, Windows VCL application. And as we're watching this on video as a recording, I already changed my IDE font to something bigger. I will do the same for my form. I will change the font to Noto and then I'll make it Noto Sans like 11 so you can follow easier if I drop the controls on the form. And we need an edit control, T edit, and not only one, we need one for the investment. We'll need another one for the percentage and of course we need another one for the amount of years so i just copy paste these things i'm not gonna bother with labels in this example your source code i'll link that later on your source code that you can download later on will have the nice looking labels and everything and the last thing is a button that will allow us to calculate the um, compound interest over the amount of years that we specify. So this thing name, I'm going to name it button calculate. And this first is going to be TXT amount. 
Now we have txt percentage and txt years for the number of years for the investment to calculate. We select all the edits and select the text cleared out and we want nice default values. Obviously, we could also have used like number edit and all that kind of stuff that is available. Also for the different edit forms, we could use a spin control. This is, this is not part of this talk. We just want to focus on getting this over quickly to the web. And here for the number of years, let's pick five. And then something nice on Delphi, we can use anchors. This button should be aligned to the right top. And these all should be aligned to the top left. That's perfect. So if we resize this, the button stays where it is. And for the caption, calculate, calculate. And this string grid is the last one. String grid right here. Let's align it with the right corner over the right edge of the button. And this one is going to be anchored everywhere. So if we resize this, this is nice. So we already have the form set more or less. I'll save this now just in case. I named it Watch My Money just as before. The main form, U for main. And of course, in addition, the name is form main. And the caption we can also change to watch my money. Perfect. So we already have a lot of stuff set. So the remaining part is the implementation. I don't really want to bother you with the um, intricacies of uh, economic calculus or financial calculus. So I'm just going to define a couple of methods i'm going to explain the fingerprint and then i'm going to copy paste the implementation of those so first of all we need a function that gives us the amount for n periods or after n periods so a capital that's the capital that we have and then eight percent it's also both are going to be double values and then the period in this case, it's number of years. I'm well aware of the fact that real world scenarios go down to days and there's so many different ways to calculate this on CDs here in the United States, for example. I, I don't want to get into any of this. This is supposed to be a simple example. And we return the amount of money we have. So if you invest $10,000 for 10% over five years, this returns the amount of money you'll have and the next one we need is the calculate periods function that is actually going to fill our user interface with the values so again a capital a percent double and then a periods integer same fingerprint in a way but it's this is my mistake here. It's a procedure, as we just call it, to fill the user interface with the information that we want. Procedure, Control Shift C, and both methods are being implemented by Delphi automatically. And we also need a method, a helper method from math. So we use user system dot math right there. And then we need to implement the method to calculate the amount after certain periods. And this is a formula you can take it from Wikipedia, for example, or somewhere else. So what happens is the capital is being multiplied by the power to, of this to the period. So the pow this to the power of the amount of years so if you look at that so the formula is this for the periodic compounding and this is what we need to do this is the power function so we need to do power of the percentage divided by 100 so we're actually using the percent number like 10 percent 10 not 0.1 so we have to divide by 100 we add one and then 
we take it to the power of the number of periods, in this example five, and then we multiply the initial investment with that. That's the amount after so many years. The calculate periods one is now the interesting one that is going to change the user interface. So what we'll do, I'll split this up a little bit. So let me also format this a little bit nicer. So I'll explain the interesting parts in detail and then the ones that are repetitive, I'm just gonna copy paste. First of all, we need four columns. That's, that's in my interesting one in our grid and I haven't named it yet. So this is name grid and looking at the options that's the interesting property here we have to make sure that editing is disabled we don't want to give the user the ability to edit we want to give however the user the ability to size, resize the columns like like here right like that they can grab them well the fixed column um, is a special one and we want to have the default column alignment set to right everything should be right justified and we would like the default column with 150. And then we have to make it a little bit wider. And this is why I use the anchors because that makes it very simple to do that. So now we have named it and made it look a little bit nicer. You can also change it to a mono spaced font later on. There's lots of things that you can do later. Row count and the number of rows is A periods, right? Because for example, five years plus the headers plus one. And then we just have to set the values of the header cell and I can copy paste that right here. So this is the first one is going to be the year and then the beginning of the year, the interest and the amount at the end of the year. So these are all amounts in dollars and this is the first year, second year, third year and so on. And now we just need to I use this is this is the only thing I can't use inline variables. I could use them, but the problem is that TMS Web Core can't do inline variables because it's based on the free Pascal compiler. So this is a little bit of a restriction. So we have to use the um, I don't want to call it old fashioned, but uh, we have to define our variables at the beginning. So we have a last value double and we have an integer variable. And I definitely don't want to start the discussion if inline variables make sense. So in this case, I can guarantee you they're very helpful if you have them. So we start with our initial capital investment as the last value of the iteration. And then we do year one to year five for example and then we go here and again we need the value the current value after that year and that year is over so l value is get amount or n periods go completion a capital that's the investment the initial investment that's never going to change and then we can say four percent that's the parameter that we have here. And for I, number of years here, that's our number of years. That's why I started at one, by the way. And the, the nice thing is I can use the same thing for the row of the grid because row number zero is the header row. So row number one is the actual first data row. So I can say grid cells and then zero comma I is i dot to string that's it and we can repeat the same thing let me do one for you cells we can do one comma i then i use format my great function and i use a um, i hard code the currency dot two means two decimals after the period and n um, tells us that we also want a thousand separator. Okay, so 1000 is one comma zero 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 period zero zero American formatting on my machine. So here, and what do we want to replace this end with with the last value so that the first time is obviously our capital. It's the same thing. And then we do the same thing for the other columns. 
And for the second one, or the second one, which is the third actual, is the I uh, do the difference between the current value and the last value. So that's what I earned that year. And then in the last column, the actual value. And then don't forget, I forget this. this I forgot this the first time I implemented it. Um, that L last value, of course, has to be set to the value of the current iteration. So, and that is all you need to do to update your user interface. It's pretty, pretty easy to do. And now the final part, and we're going to implement it in a way that it is resistant to stuff being entered the wrong way. So what we want to have to do here, these are all strings because we read the text property and the text property is a string. So we have to convert this to, to double values, which um, for whatever reason is called float and the VCL terminology in the day. So we need L capital, which is our initial investment. We have the percentage, which is also a double value. And we have the number of years for the investment, which is an integer. And then we can say in an if statement, try string to float. So we tell Delphi try this, and then we can tell Delphi to try it with what? Amount dot text. And we want to store it in L capital. And it only returns true if the conversion was successful. Otherwise, L capital, the value is not defined, but we know if it returns false that the conversion wasn't successful. So we concatenate all the different things we need, like end. And here the same thing, string to float. And this time we take txt percentage.txt and we want to put that one in L percentage. And the next one is not try string to float. The next one is try string to int. It actually exists as well. So we have txt years.txt, comma L years. And then begin. So only if all of them are successful. So if we didn't enter any invalid values in any of them, and there's not going to be an exception being thrown. So we can simply say here, else, again, and say show message, very simple. Please enter valid amounts for all invalid amounts and numbers. Boom. Obviously, you could. Um, cascade the if if you wanted to know which one of the fields not important for this example though so at this point we simply call calculate periods for the l capital for l percentage and years and we're done run the application 10 thousand 10 percent five years and there you go that's our investment for um, five years. Every year, first year 1,000, second year 1,100, and so on and so on. It only runs on the Windows computer system because we pick the VCR, right? So how difficult is it to get this over to the web? And this is what I'm going to show you now. So we keep this in here. This is what we'll use to, to copy paste so in order to add another project to this project group, I right click right click here and say add a new project. Don't use file new. That will get rid of the existing VCL project. We want a second project in our project group. So add new project. And after installing TMS Web Core, you also get the Delphi TMS Web category right here. You, this will also be the same for the trial version. The trial version is not different from the real version at all. So you should see TMS Web right here. And we'll pick the TMS Web Bootstrap application. Okay. We get a second project. It doesn't have the exe. It has the .web extension. I have the designer in the middle, which is very similar to the VCL designer. It actually looks like the data module designer, to be truthful. But this is your page what it will look like and you have 
the tuple app and the TMS web controls are now the controls that we can use. And interestingly, if we expand this a little bit, the TMS web controls have the same name as the VCL controls, just with the moniker web in front of them. So if you need a button, TMS, uh, instead of using T edit, you use T web edit. If you need a button, T web button, and so on. And this is the same for scroll. And this is the same for the string grid, for example. See, T web string grid, also available. This is the same for a timer. For all the standard controls that you have in the VCL, you will find them for TMS web. And that's why it's so easy to transfer existing VCL applications and bring them over to the web. Before you do anything, save. So we're going to save all and pick the file names for everything. Again, I picked U for main for my first form, but now I get like something like project1.html. That is the starting point for your application. So you pick index.html right here. And then the project file, once again, can be something like watch my money web. And there we go. I also stored the project group as the watch my money group. And from here, we can have a look at the project structure of a TMS web core project. We have the main form, and it actually is, if we look at the class, it is a T form one. And the only difference is it is derived from T web form and not T form like in the VCL. However, the functionality is the same. We have the designer, we go over to the source code and we can just like with the VCL application, we can start building our application. And let's just drop a control here and edit control and run. And the fascinating thing is this creates the web application, starts up the browser and here's our edit control in the browser. Fascinating, isn't it? And that's how we can start building our application. We can literally use the same approach as we did before. That means we drop three edit controls, one, two, copy paste also works like so. And then we can simply say, okay, this is our investment amount. This is our percentage and this is the number of years like so and then we also need a web button right here which will be used for calculation so we set the caption to calculate and then the name to button calculate and then again we have the txt what do we call it now the txt amount txt percentage or percent and then txt years and this is button calculate these three are supposed to be aligned left top and this one rewrite lines to the right that doesn't work so well on the web browser because we don't have the total width as defined. So let's keep it as it is. And with that, let's run it real quick. So you see what's happening here because we picked a bootstrap application. So by default, TMS Web Core also picks bootstrap specific stuff. And without going far into this, this button now also has the bootstrap specific formatting. If you run, if you were to access this URL on your phone, you would actually see the phone representation of this button. The cool thing is you can change this pretty easily by going into the element class name here, which is by default set to button, button, light. For example, we can do button, button, primary. This is all from the documentation from Bootstrap. This is nothing to do with TMS Web Core in particular. And if you rerun this now, you get the button in the TMS Bootstrap class according to what is specified in TMS Web Core, whereas it's a blue default button. Okay, so the next step, the string grid, right here, just like before, here, and 
we set the options again. So name as grid. And with regards to options, we're going to say call sizing. Yes, no editing, perfect. And the default call with 50 again. So we have to make this a little bit wider already. Okay, okay. Go here. I think 150 might be a little bit overdoing it. Well, let's see how it turns out. So it's so it's like this. And now we can copy paste the code, believe it or not. So we go here, select the tax property to nothing, click the calculate button, and the just notice we never renamed the form, form main and button calculate click. We go over to our WCL application and copy paste the code for the button click calculate click. So here, copy and do the same, paste. So calculate periods, yes, we don't have that yet, correct. So we go over to our VCL application, we copy the two private methods. So, and then because we named them both all T for main, we can actually copy paste them as they are. So we should be able to calculate periods and then also the amount for periods as they are without code completing them first. So just add them here and let's compile. Just so you see, I am not cheating. The, there is a mistake in there. So for main, we close the VCL one. Power is unknown. Well, it, it sure isn't because we forgot to say use this. And this is the next cool thing. We can literally use this. We can literally use the system.math just like before, compile. So even the unit names are the same. So everything, you will feel right at home. So success, rerun this. And I forgot to enter default values there. So 10,000, 10%, uh, 10 five years, calculate, and boom, there it is. There is your web application. This runs inside of a web browser um, with zero work implementation wise, the same implementation, you could use the same code that you've had. And this is now a full blown web application. Let's add the default values like we had before. So here text 10,000 and here 10 and five years. And we also had something here, default column alignment right justification so just so you see that everything literally is the same there is no changes you can take your software as it is and migrate it to the web that's the power of tms web core that you can take existing vcl code existing user interfaces from your desktop applications and bring them to the web in mere minutes i would say if you use standard components from the vcl you're done in no time otherwise of course you have to do some modifications but this is the true power that you if you can develop for the vcl with tms web core you also a delphi web developer because there is no difference tms web core gives you the same concepts the same rapid application development approach drop components on the form configure the components in the object inspector run your applications and boom you have your web application on the disk it looks like nothing special as promised this is what is being created. You get an HTML file for each of your forms because that's what the web is all about. But your application is actually all JavaScript. And this map file is debugging information so that you can debug your application inside of the browser and inside of the IDE. And these two, this is the bootstrap, which could also be loaded from the internet. So you wouldn't even have to bundle this. So really your application is these couple of files and that's for a web project 
not a lot of files, but there's no dependencies on any executables that you have to run on your Linux service, on your Windows server. This is just a web application that can be deployed with any web server. If you would like the source code for this example that I've just shown you, it's available on GitHub. Just go to my GitHub repository, Holger Flick, or github.com slash Holger Flick slash DBC for Delphi Bootcamp underscore Web Core Basics. And there is the source for both the VCL project and for the web project. As soon as the conference happens, the private is going to go away right now as a private project that only I can access. but as soon as the conference launches, you will be able to access it under the URL given right here. With that, let me show you a couple of more demos that are bundled with the product that show you the full power of TMS Web Core. Let me just preface this. TMS has dozens, if not hundreds, of demonstrations divided in different categories like basics, DB backend, FNC, jQuery, um, my lead is for services. What are services? You can use Firestore, Google Calendar, Google Charts, Google Drive, all of this. And as it is bundled in the Web Core folder, that tells you you don't need anything else but TMS Web Core. There's nothing else requ required. Only exception to the demos here are the FNC demos, which require, of course, the FNC components. But anything else you see, for example, unit testing is possible with. TMS Web Core as well, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's look at the basics. And what I would recommend to look into is the form, uh, multiple forms demo that shows you how you can create applications that have multiple forms. So that's not a pro problem either using multiple forms in a TMS Web Core application. And you can also exchange data between those two forms. For example, I can say sample text edit. This is Delphi um, Bootcamp. And I pick a regular form, click here to open the second form. See the value goes over here. The form is completely replaced. I can click close form. I can even intercept these closings using um, source code. Go back. There's actually multiple ways you can do this, but this again, I'm getting ahead of myself. There are certain events that you can either implement or you can also use anonymous methods, closures that you can implement or TMS Web Core has something very special for you because everything on the internet is usually asynchronous that you can get a special um, keyword, I call it, even though it's not officially a keyword in the Delphi language, but you can use await to wait for an asynchronous process to complete, and that makes programming with TMS Web Core even easier. Of course, there's also pop-up forms like here, or you can get a pop-up form with a caption like so. And what is also interesting, this uses a color scheme, a custom color scheme, and this demo, which is never really um, introduced prop here, we go here, the which I never introduced properly, this demonstration itself, if you look at the form, at the first form, there is a header and a footer, and that is something you can do by modifying the HTML, for example, because you can not only use the form designer, you can also use the HTML to make changes to your design. And there are certain levels of customization depending on how advanced your scale with TMS Web Core gets. But the key point to take away from today is if you can develop applications with Delphi, you can develop web applications with TMS Web Core. The most complex you can get customization wise is using a template that you download from the internet and just integrate your web application into this template. And just let me start by showing you the example and this is a template I think that has been downloaded from where is it, from Creative Tim. And this part here is all TMS Web Core, like the navigation right here, or these settings right here. This is all TMS Web Core. The scenario is that you only concentrate on the business part of your application and the design part 
is done by somebody else. So you concentrate on these parts, like the order number, order date, on these edit fields, the button, your navigation, which is hosted in a, in a frame, and you focus on that, and your source code focuses on that all alone. However, you incorporate information that you get from a web designer right here in the HTML, and that web design has hooks integrated into the design. For example, here you see PAD menu one, menu two. These are hooks that you can access from your programming to make changes to these components. So the complexity of your web applications really have no limit. Hopefully, I really, really triggered your interest in developing web applications with Delphi and TMS Web Core. And this is in my own interest, actually, I wrote a book about TMS Web Core. This is already the second edition. The first edition came out in 2020. This video was recorded in 2023. So this is the second edition. And this book, I claim I'm the author. I can make huge claims, right? This book will not only get you started, it will also explain to you more advanced topics. And it will be your reference to do web development with Delphi and TMS Web Core. This URL here, flixengineering.com slash books, gives you a TMS Web Core application, which allows you to select your Amazon store. And then the book title, which should be for this particular book, TMS Web Core Second Edition, English. I have many more books there. Feel free to browse and see what I have to offer. But this book in particular gets you started with TMS Web Core and not only gets you started, it also gives you advanced topics. For example, you learn how to build PWAs like for mobile devices, how to build Electron and Miletus applications, how to integrate existing JavaScript, and then also how you can create Windows and Linux web services with TMX data for your backend because database programming, right? Delphi and databases, they belong together. So I also cover you there, how you can get your databases into the internet so you can access them using a web service. And then the second edition even covers Linux deployment for your web services. And I also show how you can access real-time APIs, web sockets. In this book, I use a stock web service where you see how the stocks are being updated live. And then using T-dataset controls, which you've known from the VCL for years and years to manage your data in your applications. And then also responsive web design, which we almost didn't cover. And also the web design the most advanced part with custom HTML and CSS controls. And you get lots and lots of examples. There's examples for Google Maps, Google Charts, YouTube. And then one of the biggest parts in the book as well is how you can deploy your applications to Linux, Windows, hosting providers, and then using Docker. So you can wrap your TMS Web Core application in a Docker container, send this Docker container to a customer, and the customer can run your web application in their own network without having to bother about a web server or anything. Even the database backend can be hosted in this. So the customer or you yourself can set up the whole scenario. The multi-tier development becomes really, really easy with Docker. And all of this is being shown in the book. Again, my name is Holger Flick, holger at flixengineering.com. Thank you for your attention. And for anything TMS Web Core, also go to web.tmssoftware.com. I'll be happy to answer any of the questions that you might have. Take care. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know, I, every time Holger does a session, and he, he and I have done a couple together, but every time he does a session, we just explode with questions and people say, oh, it's so great, and all the rest of it. And the good news is Holger is here live with us, uh, being able to join us for the live q and Hello, Holger. Hi, Ian. I hope you Ah, There I am. I, I hope everybody yeah. can see me too. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm just going to make sure I've saved a load of questions. There were just tons of questions. I know you answered a few because they're, they're, like, it was a little bit of a problem with the interface, but um, uh, I think we fixed that now. Let me just turn off the scroller um, and just say to people, you, you know, it's up that way somewhere. There, I think. You're, on my, you're on my left. 
So yeah, I it's weird. Uh, I, I'm all reverse. I had to reverse myself because my uh, logo on the shirt was back to front at some point. But um, yeah, that's strange. I'm a, oh yeah, there you go. I think it's by de default. Yeah, not sure what that means, but it's exciting. I never got an MVP shirt. I, I say this to everybody, but there you go. I got the new one I'll now. Talk, so talk to, like... I'll talk to the person that can change that. Uh, that MVPs get a shirt. Who would that be? Oh wait, that's me now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so um, obviously, you and I are good friends. We talk a lot about. Uh, Martha says the shirt is haunting you, Ian. Oh my, yeah, she's not wrong. Um, so the uh, you and I talk a lot. We're both big fans of TMS, and in fact, actually, uh, when I code at the moment, I'm involved in a very, very large project um, that uses TMS Web Course. I'm kind of biased towards it. Um, I try to be even about all the tech partners because. Um, it is my job to interface with the MVPs and the tech partners, the developer relations. But as as I've said multiple times, if TMS stop making good products, then I'll stop talking about them. So it's, it's it's as simple as that. But there are other people doing other products, and I do try and give them a fair crack of the whip as well. It's quite important. And I can see from the messages on my screen uh, quite a few people scanning your uh, QR code as well. So uh, um, just send me the check in the mail, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Right, so um, how long have we got? Higher, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so we've got about eight minutes. Um, the session that's after us is a little bit uh, long as well, so we might get stuck. Okay, so um, let's see what we've got. Uh, this one came up, and there was a few similar ones. And someone was saying, uh, Jude de Silva, um, I think might be from Brazil, um, was asking how to do a data connection. Um, I was busy answering questions, so I didn't actually see if he covered that part. Um, did you cover that in the question? No, I didn't. Didn't cover it in the video. Obviously, it's covered in the in the book. Um, you need a web service backend of some sort. You can't connect from your browser correctly to the database. That would because the, as I said, the JavaScript application actually runs in the browser where your end customer is located. And uh, that would then be the browser connecting to the database, and uh, nobody would give you the privileges to do that, to connect yeah. to their database inside of their company. So you need a web server backend. TMS has TMS X data, um, which is pretty great to use because it makes serialization of your objects easily if you use Object relational mapping from TMS, it's even easier. If you have existing databases, you can create that on the fly. So I think Ian has, has a, that in production even. I think yeah, you're creating sure. a database and then, and then you can even use a query language inside of your browser URLs to query that database. So, um, but there's also um, open source products out there in the Delphi community that allow you to build REST APIs. Um, so it's not a requirement that you need to buy another product from TMS. I have um, uh, a, a Vapor backend, for example, that's written in Swift that connects to a database. You can use it just <laughs> fine in TMS Web Core. Uh, any, Everybody, any case, uh, Holger is a big fan of Swift, and I absolutely hate it. We're kind of on opposite ends of the fence on that one. That's we're, why we're I'm on putting opposite places. ends there, yes. <laughs> exactly. But, we uh, agree about most things, but not on Swift, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, TMS Web Core offers the T data set, T data source uh, architecture that we as Delphi developers have known for years. And I think it was even in Delphi 1 already. So yeah, yes. um, you can support that. Um, the T data set, of course, um, that's the only downside right now. It has to be uh, one dimension. Basically, you can't do a data set inside of a data set if you wanted to do that. But that's already advanced stuff. So if you yeah. just have a data set and you query it from your REST server, you can even use that with a data set and data source. And then TMS Web Core also has the TDB uh, components like a TDB edit, TDB grid. So you get there pretty quickly and you can migrate your products quickly. And then in the next step, if you want to basically add more, there is also like bootstrap specific stuff um, for grids and uh, it makes the transition pretty easy. Yeah, and I, and I think I would say there as well that um, if you are a Delphi programmer already, you're basically writing Delphi code 
using all the things you're familiar with because you know you've got a t data source and you've had a t data source in your delphi apps since as you say and i agree since delphi one so it's not like you're having to relearn something to to um you know produce html and the, it's important to say as well that the um when you hit compile um for web core what comes out is a bunch of web pages and some javascript uh, and that's an important definition because if you use something like IntraWeb, which is a similar but different technology, IntraWeb actually produces an executable, which is then running either as a ISAPI module or, or something like that, or it's a standalone uh, server. And so you don't get the HTML uh, and you can't really quite interact in the same way. Whereas WebCore is, is taking your Delphi code and go, and out comes a load of HTML. And I, I, that is very, very... Um, powerful because as you showed you can use a html template and write your code um in delphi to talk to it there are a few quirks um because the browser model imposes some restrictions to do with things like asynchronous and synchronous behavior um but once you've got your head around that it's not that difficult it, you know yeah. and we didn't get like into play. those we didn't get get into those language constructs that you can do um the, the asynchronous calls can be handled pretty easily with the new language features that TMS Web right. Core introduces. So um, JavaScript, yeah, it's it's literally compatible with um, all browsers, and it's also compatible with any. I haven't found a web server yet, even like the the mini ones that you can find that was not compatible with TMS Web Core. Um, we we, so we did some A/B testing for the project I was working on. And we tried it with every uh, type of web host we could find um, because obviously we had to make it robust. And also we had it running on a number of different browsers from tablets to um, Chromebooks to uh, Linux laptops running, you know, Chromium slash some other weird browser, Brave browser, I think we tested it on a few others as well. And it, and it worked on everything. And again, uh, you know, I'm currently representing Embarcadero, so I... You know, I'm saying there are other alternatives, but all I can say from my personal experience as a developer was it is a very credible solution, and it, it and it's you know as evidenced by the amount of people who are scanning that barcode and uh, and saying nice things like Joe Carney there book is worth the money because uh, it's quite reasonable. Um, Thank you, Joe, you know, and a shout out to Joe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the, there's, I think you've got three books at the moment. Is that right? Something like that. And someone's scanning the QR code again. Um, they're great so books. We, they're, they're, the latest one's very thick. <laughs> it's, yes, uh, because it's, it's the, the second thick. edition. I wanted to make sure people get actually that bought the first one, get a lot of yeah. new stuff in there. There's also the, the hands on series. Hands on one is about X data, real world project. Yes, and yes. Um, so that's that's really good to do. There's also an online course that I've got online about Xdata if you want to do the web service backend in more detail. And for the Delphi developers out there, Xdata is all VCL um, if you use the Windows. And you can also deploy to Linux, so you don't need a Windows server per se, and to Docker, which I also so show in the web core book. Um, there's another question about, does the book explain how to have a current HTML page? Um, as any web core application is nothing but HTML or basically a JavaScript application, just use an iframe and you're happy to go. So you can implement it as part of a um, WordPress application, for example, just use an iframe and then you have your uh, application in there. Yeah. And, I, and I, I think that's the thing as well, that the, the technology is, is straightforward. It's not anything too tricky. Uh, for people to grasp and and the benefit is if you're not very uh, if you're averse to being a web developer but you consider yourself a developer and you want to produce web apps so in my case it's a very big uh, uh, human resources application um, the brief was they said I want to take the desktop app which is um, written in various versions of Delphi and has been around for 20 odd years I want that app but I want it in the web uh, in the browser, and that's exactly what we did. And if you take screenshots between the desktop version and the web version, it looks almost exactly the same. There are some differences about menu bars and things like that that obviously don't make sense in the browser, but it's uh, connecting to MySQL in the background using uh, Xdata and um, 
or radius is a part of it as well and it uses uh, two-factor authentication I, I actually choose not to use uh, TMS's uh, Sphinx that we talked about yesterday with uh, Wagner but uh, great system um, we're running short of time Holger um, are there any other questions that you particularly want to uh, yeah, address? Two, two basically the, the second edition replaces the the first edition so basically the second edition is the book you want to buy um, in Ger I never translated it to German, so the German edition only has the first edition, but English is, um, yeah, that's the second one, exactly. Yeah. And I, mean, it's, I never, it's like, it's not available in India. Please talk to Amazon, because I did not exclude India. So if, if it is available on Amazon, it should be. Sometimes... Um, especially during COVID times, it was not, um, for example, I had problems to order to, to Belgium ones. So the Belgian store, Belgium well, really is a third world country. So I can understand. Yeah, so I don't, I wouldn't think what the problem is order from.com or it should, should be not an issue. And there is definitely no restrictions on a computer technology yeah. book like TMS web core. Cool. Are there any courses available for, t well, the X data course, um, is for beginners of, TMS X data, but I always require um, knowledge of the Delphi language, obviously. That's what Ian is for with learndelphi.org and all those videos there. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a, a group effort and, you know, you're an MVP and you're actually a regional, uh, I forget what we call them now, director or something like that. I, I can't, can't remember. You're the regional coordinator, that's it. Yes, uh, that's it is, yeah, for North yeah, America. I knew yeah. it for it. <laughs> Um, but very active, very popular, very uh, um, prolific author, and and also a good friend of mine as well. Um, you know, we bonded over both being Europeans in the United States, married to Americans. So uh, it's uh, it's it's like having your own mafia gang or something like that. If you're a expat over here, don't so mention that word in association with me. You know, we got some pretty <laughs> pretty big interviews <laughs> coming up in the future. <laughs> You're in, you're in Florida. You'll be fine there. The map yeah, right. right down there. It's too hot and sweaty. Same as Texas. Nobody really cares. <laughs> Just, you know, oh, it's way too hot. Yes, yes, correct. Yeah. So uh, there was one final hot. question from Ralph. Um, yeah. How easy to build a responsive with layout properties? Um, you can actually do the responsive stuff just using uh, anchors and AL client and all that kind of stuff. And then there is um, a specific responsive component um, that even allows you to define the, the, the different media breakpoints inside of the IDE. However, if you really want to do real, real responsive stuff, have a look at the bootstrap framework, build your grid, and then integrate that into your TMS web core application. Um, might be easier, but you can use anchors and alignments just fine. That works. Perfect. Well, uh, we'll run out of time and you and I uh, will probably do another webinar again because we keep saying that we'll do one together. And uh, We definitely will, yes, after the yeah, summer. For sure, yeah, exactly. But thanks for coming and we're, we're going to roll off and do some more stuff, but I'll talk to you uh, somewhere, I'm sure, at some point. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, perfect copy and have a good day. All right, you too. Thank you.